Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I have yet another video on yet another forgotten military project, this time from pre-World War II that could have entered service if World War II had not happened as this weapon system here, this aircraft, this experimental Yugoslav aircraft was one of the most advanced projects at the time to be developed in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. And this aircraft here could have been the first true vertical takeoff and landing aircraft or VTOL aircraft to enter service if we had managed to make it past the prototype stage. And that experimental aircraft is the Yugoslav Zichenko Aerostratoplane, also known as the Vertoplane from 1936-1941, an experimental Yugoslav vertical takeoff aircraft that was developed for an experimental Yugoslav seaplane slash aircraft carrier that was also being designed at the same time. The Zichenko Aerostratoplane was an experimental vertical takeoff and landing aircraft developed between 1936 and 1941. It was developed by a Russian engineer, a Russian aircraft engineer living in Yugoslavia at the time by the name of Nikolai Zichenko. Nikolai Zichenko was a ex-Imperial Russian soldier and aircraft engineer who migrated to Yugoslavia in the year of 1920. He actually served in the First World War as an Imperial Russian soldier and later joined the Russian Civil War as a white Russian soldier in the White Guards movement. He was a soldier in the White Russian Army fighting against the Bolshevik forces during the first half of the Russian Civil War between the years of 1918 and 1920, although the conflict lasted until 1923. In 1920, Zachenko fled to Yugoslavia, where he later got a job working for the newly formed Yugoslav Novosad Arsenal. The Novosad Arsenal was an aircraft and armaments factory based in Novosad, Yugoslavia, whose main task was developing aircraft components and making copies of existing aircraft. During this time period, Zuchenko was mostly tasked with making copies of German and Austro-Hungarian fighter and trainer aircraft from the First World War, as well as components for newer aircraft being developed in Yugoslavia at the time. He continued working there until he developed his own experimental aircraft, his first prototype, known as the Zuchenko Walter, also known as the Rasava, which was a light sporting aircraft developed in the year of 1931 in conjunction with the Czech Walter Company. Now in 1936, he actually submitted this design, the Aerostratoplane, to the Yugoslav Supreme Air Force Command. At the time, Yugoslavia was looking for new aircraft engineers to develop new warplanes for the Yugoslav Air Force. And this Aerostratoplane was one of the experimental planes that was put forth by Nikolai Zuchenko. Now, between the years of 1937 and 1939, the Yugoslav Supreme Air Force Command gave Nikolai Zuchenko enough funding to build one fully functioning prototype of his Aerostratoplane. This prototype was meant for the newly built Yugoslav seaplane carrier slash aircraft carrier Zemaj or Zemaj. Zemaj was an experimental seaplane carrier and aircraft carrier type of warship that was developed for the Yugoslav Navy and was meant to be the new flagship of the Navy if it were to be commissioned in its original form. But this never happened as World War II would break out and Zemaj would later be captured by the German forces. But going back to Zichenko, between 1937 and 1939, he built his first fully functioning prototype, at least fully functioning on paper. Now, this experimental VTOL aircraft was powered by a Czechoslovakian-made Walter Micron 50 horsepower or 38 kilowatt engine. This engine was actually too underpowered to power this aircraft. But this aircraft is what you would imagine an early VTOL aircraft looking like. It was a tilt roller aircraft, meaning the wings were designed to tilt upward, allowing the propellers to act as a helicopter blade. It was a experimental aircraft with the ability to tilt its wings upwards to lift itself off the ground. This aircraft had revolving struts in its wings that allowed its wings to tilt upward at a 180 degree angle allowing it to take off vertically just like a helicopter to then which when it was high enough it could lower its wings in an instant back into its fixed configuration and then fly as a traditional fixed wing aircraft. Now the aircraft was powered again 
by a Czechoslovakian made Walter Micron 50 horsepower engine, which was actually underpowered, and it had a maximum speed of just 220 kilometers per hour or 137 miles per hour, and it had a maximum flight ceiling of 5,000 meters. Now, in September of 1939, the Aerostrato plane was actually tested at the Yugoslav Novosad Air Base in front of the Yugoslav Supreme Air Force Command. During these tests, it was discovered that the engine was severely underpowered. The Walter Micron 50 horsepower four-cylinder gasoline engine was designed for light sporting aircraft, not for military-grade aircraft like this Aerostrato plane developed by Zuchenko. Now, Zuchenko knew this, and when he originally designed this aircraft, he actually designed a 200-horsepower gas turbine engine that was meant to power the Aerostrato plane. But he never received funding to actually build the engine, at least not to the way he wanted it to be built. As a result, he had to use the underpowered Walter Micron engine. During the construction of the Aerostrato plane, he actually lightened the aircraft design by both removing and simplifying many of the aircraft's components. By the time the first prototype was completed, the aircraft weighed between 350 and 425 kilograms, or 771 pounds, to 936 pounds, which is only about half of its original design weight. Even with this lightened load, the aircraft's engine was still severely underpowered, and the aircraft failed to lift itself off the ground, even at maximum power, during its test run, during the testing phase in September of 1939. As a result of this, the Yugoslav Supreme Air Force Command would cut off funding for the project in late 1939, but Suchenko did not stop working on the project. He continued funding the project himself and continued working on the project all the way up until the invasion of Yugoslavia in 1941. In April 1941, the Axis powers led by Germany, Italy, and Hungary invaded Yugoslavia and the Nova Sad Air Base came under attack by the German Luftwaffe. And during this time period, the Yugoslav Air Force reportedly destroyed the prototype while Suchenko was actually still working on it, in order to keep it from falling into Axis hands. At this time, the aircraft was 90 to 95 percent complete, meaning that at some point after September 1939, Suchenko continued working on the aircraft and may have developed or constructed that experimental 200 horsepower gas turbine engine that he originally designed for this aircraft in 1936-1937. But either way, the aircraft was 90-95% to 95 completed, but ultimately it was destroyed, according to the Yugoslavs themselves, it was destroyed to keep it from falling into Axis hands. Now that's according to the Yugoslav sources. Other sources state that the aircraft was actually captured by the Germans and was later transported back to Germany where it was renamed the Dresch. The Dresch was used as a test bed for many German experimental aircraft at the time, including the German Fleetner 5282 helicopter. The Fleetner 5282 Colibri was an experimental German helicopter developed for both the German Luftwaffe and the German Navy, or the Kriegsmarine. It was actually tested on the captured Yugoslav seaplane carrier Zamaj by the German Navy during the course of World War II, along with many of Germany's other experimental aircraft carrier type warships and aircraft carrying combat vessels. Ultimately, the Germans considered the Aerostrato plane to be not that valuable towards the end of the war. The Germans would stop testing the aircraft by 1944 and would continue to develop their own experimental helicopters and VTOL aircraft until Germany's ultimate defeat at the end of World War II. After World War II, Zuchenko would continue living in Yugoslavia for some time, but would ultimately migrate to Australia, where he would later die of old age in the year of 1975, thus ending the history of his experiments with VTOL aircraft development. Now, in terms of the potential of this aircraft, if this aircraft had all of its components during its original test in 1939, it might have been accepted into service in some capacity. Now, keep in mind, this aircraft here would be considered a technology demonstrator by today's standards. A technology demonstrator is an experimental aircraft designed to showcase what a specific type of aircraft could do. For example, in the 1990s, we had fifth generation technology demonstrators like the Russian MiG, MiG 144 and 142, and the American YF-23, which were all 5th gen technology demonstrators that would later lead to the development of the Russian Su-57 
and the American F-22 Raptor, which are two fifth-generation aircraft that are currently in service with both the United States and Russian Air Force. So going by that logic, you could consider the Suchenko Aerostrato plane to be a technology demonstrator for the VTOL-type aircraft. Now, what kind of aircraft this would have been if it had advanced past the prototype stage? Some suggest that the Zuchenko aircraft could have been developed into either a fighter aircraft or a reconnaissance aircraft. Most likely reconnaissance because the VTOL portion of this aircraft is basically basically makes it as a fixed wing helicopter, kind of. So a reconnaissance aircraft would have made the most sense, but I can see the Yugoslavs developing a fighter, a VTOL-type fighter, out of this if the project had made it past the prototype stage. Now, the Zinchenko Aerostrato plane ultimately ended up failing because the Yugoslavs did not provide enough funding for Zinchenko to build his experimental gas turbine that was meant to power this aircraft. And at the same time, he could not find a replacement engine that was small enough to fit in his Aerostrato plane. Keep in mind, this plane here was much lighter than the other experimental Yugoslav aircraft being developed at the time. Technically, you could call it a light aircraft, as this Zuchenko Aerostrato plane was actually lighter than Zuchenko's first experimental light sporting aircraft, the Rasava, I mentioned earlier in the video. As that aircraft weighed twice as much as this aircraft, that aircraft was also powered by a Walter light sporting engine rather than a full-sized engine that you would normally see you would normally see in a fighter aircraft or reconnaissance aircraft being used by Yugoslavia or any nation at that time. So ultimately, the project failed during its first test. Tuchenko continued working on it, but all of his progress was basically lost as the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia in World War II, and the aircraft was either destroyed by the Yugoslavs or confiscated by the occupying German forces, thus ending the history of what could have been the world's first fully functioning military grade VTOL aircraft, the Zuchenko Aerostrato plane, also known as the Verto plane from 1936 to 1941. A truly advanced concept that almost made it past the prototype stage, but was ultimately failed due to a lack of funding and the inevitable beginning of World War II. So what do you all think of this? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.